This week on The Stampede, the SMU Mustangs seek to bounce back and keep running with the top of the pack in the CUSA. We've really got two days to get over it. you got Sunday and Monday. By Tuesday morning, it's time to move on to the next opponent. Behind the success of one of the most experienced offensive lines in the nation. Starting five, we've been together since freshman year. We're, we've all redshirted, so that makes five years going on now. One of SMU's most colorful sideline personalities. Why he returned to college football. You gotta show something different. The guys read our alignment. A look north to Tulsa for a conference showdown with the Golden Hurricane. The SMU Mustangs began the season with a disappointing loss to Texas A&M. But led by senior quarterback J.J. McDermott, the team rallied with five straight victories. We lost at the A&M game and we came together. And, and when you win five in a row, you, you got to have something going for you. Including a win over rival TCU, one of the biggest triumphs the program has seen in decades. And there yes, is yes, yes. Yes. Has everybody made it to 30, to the 20, to the 10. Touchdown, SMU! The streak came to an end with a 27-3 loss to Southern Mississippi last week in Hattiesburg. We didn't play well enough on defense, we didn't play well enough on offense, and we didn't play well enough on special teams to win the game. I say they just got to jump on us early. Um, they had all the momentum on their side. I mean, it's that homecoming, home field advantage, so it took us too long to really get that swing of the game. But when we finally did, I think we played pretty well. If we were playing in their place in front of their crowd, uh, they they beat us, and they, they beat us on the scoreboard, and they probably beat us in the physical part of the game. And, uh, you know, it's tough enough to lose on the scoreboard, but now you really got to get yourself up to go play somebody and beat them physically, because most of the teams that win in football, is, they're, they're physical. The only bright spot for the Mustangs was another game north of 100 for Zach Line, who tore it up on the ground for 163 yards on 22 carries. Seen at the 44 of SMU, draw play Zach Line up the middle, 45, 50, 45, 40, first down to the 30, to the 20, and he's going to be tracked down from behind inside the Southern Miss 15-yard line. Head coach June Jones knows that every season is filled with adversity. The question now is, can the Mustangs right the ship with a win against Red Hot Tulsa? Well, the biggest thing you got to do is you got to convince the kids to let go of what happened last week. The thing that I always tell the kids is we've really got two days to get over it. You got Sunday and Monday by Tuesday morning. It's time to move on to the next opponent, and yeah, that's sports. Our confidence hasn't fall, hasn't fallen any. Uh, I think we're going to go into this game with you know same amount of confidence as we had going into that game last week, and I think we're going to be fine. We got to show up. We got to play. Uh, we can't underestimate any of our opponents in this conference. We got to take that tough loss, but we got to come back this week and rebound and get back on the right track. But it won't be easy. The Mustangs face a tough and sturdy Tulsa team. The Golden Hurricane offense is on fire, scoring 116 points in just the last three games, while holding opponents to just 64 points. Tulsa, they're a good team. Uh, they're undefeated in conference. They're the best team we played because they're our next opponent. They're our, ne our, they're our next target. We need to do what we need to do, uh, get ready, and that's going to be a good team we're going to face. There are only three losses are to top ten teams, OU, Oklahoma State, and Boise State. Tulsa's running hot right now. They're on a three-game winning streak. They've shown explosiveness even in their losses, scoring nine touchdowns total against the top-rated teams they played earlier this year. We got to stop the quarterback really in this game. He's the key to what they do. Four-year starter. He's got great command of that offense. Um, we've got to get him sacked. We can't let him extend the plays with his feet, uh, and he does that really well. They kind of got that fast-paced, no-huddle uh, offense. You know, as a defensive player, you know, you kind of see that. You get tired when you're playing defense and stuff. Tulsa, uh, they're a very good defense. They they kind of thin out the offensive line, make us. Uh, reach to a lot of blo uh, blocks, and they, they move around, they stunt very well. Defensively, we just got to go out there, play what we're told to do, uh, be technique and assignment sound, and uh, the score handle itself. On offense, 
Tulsa runs a no-huddle spread attack. Well, they've got a, a lot more, uh, like I call it, it's almost like approaching an option scheme. You've got the quarterback uh, read scheme in it where the quarterback's got the option of handing the ball off or he's got the option of keeping the ball and running it. A lot of different formations. You're going to get tight ends at times. You get two tight ends. You'll uh, have the four wide outs like our offense. Um, just a lot of different uh, personnel groupings in it. Uh, everything starts with a zone play. It just gives you a, a multitude of different things that you got to defend. SMU has struggled all year in the turnover ratio. Through seven games, the team is minus five in turnovers, a difficult stat to overcome. Tulsa's first 17 points against Rice came off turnovers, so winning the turnover battle could be a key to victory. Not turning the ball over and getting turnovers has been a big uh, emphasis on I mean, this whole season really is, uh, Coach Gans always emphasizes us getting turnovers. We haven't really been plus a lot this year at all. I don't, I don't know how many games we have. I don't even know if we've been plus in a game yet, but our record doesn't really reflect it, but you can't do that against really good teams. The keys to success is always a couple things, and one is be more physical than the other team, tackle, no big plays, no mental mistakes. I mean, you could say that about any game, but. Uh, as I always tell the players, I used to be able to watch a game, didn't know anything about two teams, and the first half, the team that tackles the best usually wins. The SMU team headed to Tulsa is a different team from seasons past. This is a focused group who, unlike previous years, loves to play on the road. I love going to um, the opponent's home and trying to beat them on their own turf. And expects to walk away with a victory we're at a point in the program now where I don't think we go into a game where we don't think we can win. Now that wasn't the case in the first year we were here. As we won some tight ball games uh, in year two, the mindset started to change. Um, that win over TCU I think was a, was a signature win for the program. That's against the top 20 team. It was, it's still a good football team. and, and uh, Our kids now believe they can play with anybody. Now it's gotten to where, you know, it, with a loss, you know, having a loss, it's not, it's not the end of the world. We, you know, we're still a good team. We're just taking it one game at a time right now. We, we see Tulsa as the best team we've played this far. We just got to go at it. It's just how we look at it, so we can't overlook any team because any team can win a game on any given day. So we just got to go out there and give it our best. The SMU Mustang coaching staff is made up of coaches who have experience in all levels of the game. Linebackers coach Joe Herring has had a long career in both the college and pros. His animated style makes him a favorite of fans and players. The coach has seen it all, and he's not afraid to share what he's learned. Make sure we recognize Ralph. Well, yeah. yeah. the, the ball. We sat down with Coach Herring to talk about what he's learned in more than three decades of coaching. Right. First, tell us about being the most animated coach on the sideline week in and week out. Well, you know, that's what I'm known for uh, it's through my many years that I've coached and I. Uh, you know, it's always been my, I mean, I love the game and I love the passion and being on the sidelines is, you know, what brings me to life. And I always try to project that to the players. I want them to always be up. I, you know, when something bad happens, let's get, go back there and get it. And don't just sit there and give me, you know, that brook trout look like, you know, what's going on. You know, let's make the adjustments, go in there and, and go play. So, yeah, I'm real excitable on the, on the sidelines and, uh, the players know if they come out that, you know, I'm going to tell them what's right and wrong and be honest with them and probably yell in their ear. But, you know, I think they're used to it now after three years. What important lessons can you pass on after years in coaching? There's a couple things that are always important about football. Number one, and still 80 to 90 percent of it is in your head. It's your psyche. And if you don't believe you can do something, nobody else will believe it. So you got to believe in yourself. You got to be mentally ready to play, and then if you're a defensive player, the name of the game is tackle the guy with the ball. You know, we give them all these 
uh, formations, defensive uh, alignments, and all these techniques. But it doesn't all, anything work until you tackle the guy with the ball. So, you know, I, I say, you know, I don't want to simplify it too much, but I even did that when I was coaching in the NFL. The first day I said, remember, guys, it's a good play when you tackle the guy with the ball. What has been the biggest game in your SMU career? Well, of course, the TCU game is because, you know, TCU is our rival because of geography, and those, our kids know their kids. And uh, the last two years, we played them really tough. And then a, a play, in, a, in it's really kind of appropriate that it happened the way it did, it was because the last two years of playing a kicking game turned to momentum, and this year, the play in the kicking game turned to momentum for us, you know, with that fumble on the kickoff and going in for a touchdown. Tell us about your history with June Jones. The one thing that you got to realize, first of all, he is an offensive, and I hate to work, use that overused word, genius, but he really understands the passing game. I mean, he really understands passing. People in the NFL have been copying off him and Miles forever. I mean, they had did this back in the 80s. You know, when I first saw it, it was now people are starting to understand, you know, why they were so successful. But he's uh, number two, he has a great temperament. And uh, three, he believes in chemistry. And he always gives everybody a second chance. He is not one of those guys, if you get in his doghouse, you'll be there forever. I've been around coaches like that. He, he is a very, and I say sometimes, June, you know, you give a guy a third chance and, you know, he, he'd always, he's always looking out for the players. And I think the thing that we have here as a coaching staff, the players know we care. You know, this does to win or lose. And I always say, well, you know, this is my last job. So, you know, the winning and losing is important because, you know, I, but the more important thing is that we play as hard as we can and, and play together, enjoy each other and, you know, do the things that you, supposed to do when you're a college football player enjoy playing the game. Attack line handoff, bounces right to the five, breaks the tackle, touchdown SMU! A third and eight, quick snap, McDermott from the shotgun, looking into the Zinzo, yes! fires, yes! caught, leaping grab, touchdown Darius Johnson! They are the unsung heroes of the offense. When Zach Line splits defenses and runs for end zone pay dirt, when J.J. McDermott stands in the pocket for what seems like forever and delivers the ball, they are the ones behind it all, silently and violently making it happen. They are the offensive line. JJ, long count, takes a snap, quick throw, right side, caught on that route, Cole Beasley, touchdown SMU! First and goal at the one, Zach Light again, right side, no contest, touchdown SMU, 10 this year for Zach. The SMU offensive line is truly the rock of this team. The five starters are all seniors, they have what may be the most experience of any line in the country, with 193 starts between them. The starting five, we've been together since freshman year. We're, we've all redshirted, so that makes five years going on now. Well, they they're, uh, obviously have been around forever. I heard we have the most starts in the country uh, than more than any other O-line. You know, we like brothers. We, we came in all at the same time. They're very mature, and we're very blessed to have them at this point. The leader of the offensive line is left guard Kelvin Beecham. Kelvin was named the best offensive tackle in the state of Texas out of all conferences by Dave Campbell's Texas Football. To his left is tackle and three-star Rivals.com recruit Josh Laribas. On the other side of the ball is guard Kelly Turner and tackle JT Brooks. And holding down the center in his first year as center is Bryce Tennyson. Together, they make up the engine that drives the offense. One for them, and nothing would flow. I mean, they got to snap the ball. They start to play, really. And if they don't block, J.J. doesn't get to throw it. If J.J. doesn't get to throw it, I don't get to catch it. So, I mean, I appreciate everything they do. And they work hard. Clem, Clem keeps them going. And Beach is, Beach is a real good leader for them. And they've been working hard. Tennyson at center is responsible for analyzing the defense as the play starts and alerting the team to any adjustments that need to be made. As a center, I'm up there uh, doing my best to, to direct the guys and you know give them the give them the uh, the down and or the defense and what they're about to run and the stunts and who Zach line our running back needs to block and you know and based off of my primary calls they'll they'll make all their other calls the tackles got stuff they got to do but usually I start the start the calling process and 
And what would a band of outlaws be without a nickname? The Goon Squad originated, I want to say, two or three years ago. And uh, we were kind of just sitting up in the film room, you know, thinking of some, some uh, nickname we could have for the group, you know. And We've had that, you know, ever since Coach Clemens become the head, you know, our offensive line coach. At left tackle, we have uh, Kelvin Beecham, who's the goonologist. You know, he's really the teacher, the professor, the, the studious one of the group. And uh, at right tackle, we've got J2 Brooks. We call him Goonzilla because he's the biggest of the bunch. We consider the interior the belly of the beast. Then you have that right guard was Kelly, and you know he has a big belly. So we just say, we just call, you know, the belly, that's the belly of the beast, but the interior, we consider that the belly of the beast. But we try to find a name for, for uh, Ribeye to kind of <laughs> give it a little bit more flavor. The evolution of this unit has coincided with the evolution of the whole team, and it's vastly different now from their early days on the Mustang team. It's night and day, it's not even a, you can't even tell who we are at that. It's all different, more physical, sets are better, more technical. I think everything's just finally, it's coming together and it's great. Two years ago, the O-line would be dramatically changed with former number one draft pick and Super Bowl champion, Adrian Clem as position coach. Coach Clem, he came in and you could just tell his competitive nature, his attitude, he was fresh from the NFL. You know, it just brought a whole new, whole new um, energy and, you know, attitude to the offensive line. On the second to last hand for right, we gotta get more movement on that play side. Uh, you guys back side, you well, turn, I saw the guy so. slant, slant you, but if that happens, you gotta step, and instead of stepping flat, you gotta step and gain ground on it and get on that play side shoulder, right? And if he keeps going to that front side, you gotta drive him and get vertical with him. He's real young and could relate with us, and you know, he was telling us what to do, what not to do, what scouts look for, and as young guys like us, we were able to build, you know, on his information and his technique that he taught us. He understands the game of football. He understands that sometimes you need to yell, sometimes you just need to, hey, say, hey, guys, you need to pick it up. And he understands that. So it's not this, this big issue of, of how he's coming at us or anything, but we understand what we need to do and what we need to do better. He knows how to get the best out of every person, you know, on the offensive line, which is, which is a good thing as a, as a coach. He brought just, I mean, he just got out of the league when he started coaching. and. Uh... And that translated, so everything we do is just punch, feet, assignments, and all that. It's great. 81 was fine. What do we have on the uh, back side? We had an uh, ET. ET, good, good with the um, jam, but yeah. as soon as you get into him, and then take him on, it's, hey, if it's a little bit delayed, drop eight to out of there, right? And the line has met expectations this year. They have protected quarterback J.J. McDermott all year allowing him to average 300 yards passing a game going into last week's game against Southern Miss. McDermott is looking deep down the middle of the field. He's actually going left side. It's Derek Thompson, and he makes a catch in the end zone. Touchdown, SMU! And they've opened up holes for Zach Line, who has romped to 14 touchdown scores this season and is always a threat for a breakout run. The handoff is to Zach Line. He's going to dance left, cut back right at the 40, 45. Slips the tackle there to midfield. Cuts right at the 45, into the open field at the 40, at the 30. And he's down to the 20-yard line for SMU. That'll be a 40-yard gain on the first play. But better than the statistical accomplishments are the W's in the win column. Five wide this time for McDermott. Pull off in the extra receiver. TCU showing a blitz, but they only bring four. McDermott looks to his right. He's going to throw for the end zone. Yes! Touchdown! The goon squad gets it done on the field, but the bond there has its roots off the field. Well, we've got a good group. We've, we've journeyed a lot together and experienced the ups and downs and the best and worst of times. And, you know, as seniors right now, we kind of reminisce and talk at all our meetings and luncheons and dinners we go to just about the fun experiences we've had and you know we have a lot of fun together and, and we know each other pretty well we you know we, we love each other you know we we enjoy each other we, we have fun we have a bond that's gonna last way past you know this year past football so it, it's enjoyable and we, we, you know we really enjoy it It's a classically beautiful day of 50-degree football weather 
as fans fill up Skelly Field at H.A. H. Chapman Stadium in Tulsa. It's the second homecoming crowd the Mustangs have faced on the road in two weeks' time. And these fans have been waiting for this matchup for weeks. Two Western Conference leaders fighting for the top spot, both with winning records and high-powered offensive attacks. The Mustangs get the ball first and go for it big on the very first play. He's going to go deep down the right side for Terrence Wilkerson, and it goes right through his hands at the 40-yard line of Tulsa. The miss kicks off a disappointing offensive afternoon for SMU. They quickly give the ball back to Tulsa and begin an exchange of punts, surprisingly, making it a defensive game early. Then, with Tulsa leading 3 to nothing. Quarterback J.J. McDermott and the offense make the mistake they know must be avoided. And it's going to be intercepted by Tulsa, running right at the 50, to the 45, to the 40, at the sideline to the 30, to the 20. The interception gives the ball and momentum to the Hurricane, and they respond right away. Four plays later, Tulsa scores on a two-yard run by running back Alex Singleton. Touchdown, Tulsa. The Mustangs get the ball back, but can't engineer a drive. And so it goes for the rest of the half as Tulsa scores two more touchdowns and SMU grows cold on both sides of the ball. The teams leave the field for halftime with a score, Tulsa 24, SMU 0. Inside the locker room, Coach Gans and Jones are nowhere near ready to give up the fight. We got ourselves into this, everybody. Now we're going to find out what we got inside of us, okay? Offense, we got to pick it up, obviously. Another goose egg and a half right here. Take some pride in yourself. I know right now we can quickly get back in this game. Back on the field, the offense responds with a five-play touchdown drive that culminates with a Zach Line touchdown. Two to the left. McDermott will hand it to Zach Line. Off right guard, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, SMU. Zach Line easily carries it in for his 14th. Unfortunately, it would be the only score of the afternoon for the Mustangs. By the end, the score was Tulsa 38, SMU 7. SMU lost the battle of the turnover, giving up five to Tulsa's two, including four picks from J.J. McDermott. The Mustangs did move the ball in the second half, but not in the red zone where it matters most. The team left the field with a lot of questions before them and their hope for a conference title in doubt. I don't know what to say. I mean, I, I don't think I've been through a stretch like that uh, before, but, you know, it'll, it'll all, uh, you know, happen. It'll, it'll pop out of it. We just got to hang together and keep fighting through it. It was a tough night in Tulsa, with some fans stunned and shaken, but Coach Jones remains steadfast and sturdy. You know, it's kind of a combination of everything that we just can't get, get it going right now. But, you know, like I told the guys, your spirits are hurt, everybody's physically hurt, and, uh, you know, Tulane's not going to care about that next week, and we've got to beat them at home.